So last time we talked about uh, the, the important parameters of a signal and we talked about three important parameters which are hmm? frequency no no the, the basic parameters of a signal phase probability amplitude right and then we talked about important matrix that uh, that we can use to also describe the signal in the frequency domain which is a, the bandwidth we talked about uh, Fourier uh, theory and the fact that the periodic signals can be represented in the frequency domain by discrete samples, whereas non-periodic signals uh, 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 are represented in general as a continuous signal in the frequency domain. Um, so we stopped at this example. So if, if we have a non-periodic composite signal that has a bandwidth of uh, 200 kilohertz, with a middle frequency of 140 kilohertz and a peak amplitude of 20 volts. The two extreme frequencies, which you, you uh, obviously have to calculate, have an amplitude of zero. So how does the signal look like in the frequency domain? So we have, so this is the, uh, 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 the frequency domain and the middle frequency is 100 40, right? Kilohertz. And the bandwidth is 200 kilohertz, so we have to, we have to go 100 kilohertz here, so this is 240. And we have to go 100 here, which, which means that this is 40 kilohertz, right? The two extreme frequencies, they have uh, uh, an amplitude of zero. So this one is zero, and this one is zero. And the peak amplitude is A, is 20 volt. So the signal might look like something like this. Okay. <clears throat> uh, of course, someone in the, in the middle section, they, they actually said, why especially like straight line? It could be something like this. which is also perfectly right. But it cannot be like this. Why? Because the peak amplitude is 20, is, is 20 volt. Okay. So, uh, so the peak amplitude has to be 20 volt. And the extreme frequencies, they have zero amplitude. And then in between, it can take any shape such that these conditions are fulfilled. <coughs> The peak amplitude is 20 volt, and the extreme frequencies, they have zero volt, okay? And why, why do we have continuous line, and not a discrete line? Because it's a non-periodic. So this is very important. All right, that's how uh, the signal might look like, okay? So this is one, one of the possible uh, shapes, of course, could be like this. Uh, okay. So in addition to being represented by an analog signal, so the digital signals, as we said, if it's periodic, it can be represented by multiple analog signals or sine waves. Um, information can also be represented by a digital signal. But our digital uh, 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 signal means that you have predefined finite set of values, not like continuous value, right? So, for example, uh, we know that uh, one, if we have a data from the higher layer, from the, uh, from the upper layer, if we have a data of one, this can be represented by a positive voltage, like three volt or five volt, whatever. Right? And zero can be represented by uh, uh, a zero voltage. Okay, although this is not the best as we have learned in 455, but this is one of the, one of the representations. Um, so a digital uh, signal can have uh, more than two levels. So in general, um, a digital signal can have multiple levels. It doesn't have to be only two, one and zero, or positive and zero. So it could, be, it could have actually multiple levels. As long as these levels are finite number, it's still a digital signal. So we can have multiple uh, levels. 
So how can we benefit from this to represent our digital data? Well, we can say that instead of having two levels only, we can have four. If we have four levels, then we can represent not only one and zero, we can represent a two bits at a time, as we will see. All right? So if we have four levels, for example, we can represent two bits. So each level can represent two bits. So, um, so zero will represent zero, zero. Okay? And maybe like two volt will represent one, zero. Something like that. And uh, uh, minus two volt will represent zero, one. Okay? So we can, we can uh, uh, play around with the digital signal and have multiple. So this is, a, this is an example of a digital signal that has only two values. And this is an example of a digital signal that has a four different levels to represent two bits. So in general, if we, if we want to represent two bits, we need to have a four levels. If we want to represent three, three bits, eight levels, and so on. So basically, the number of levels equals two, two to the power of the number of bits that you want to represent. Simple. Okay, so, um, so the number of bits per level, the number of bits per level that you can uh, represent using any number of levels is actually log to the base 2 of the number of levels. So if you have 8 levels, then you can have 3 bits uh, uh, that you can represent. Okay, and L is the number of levels. Also, we, we, we need to pay attention to the fact that if we can represent, using two levels, if we can represent uh, 1, 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, and have the digital signal that looks like this, okay, this means that in one second, we can represent only eight bits. Okay? In this, the exact same duration, I can multiply the bit rate by having this four level signal. Why? Because I was able to have multiple levels and this allowed me to represent two bits using the, the digital signal. So in the same duration, I was able to represent 16 bits instead of eight. So the bit rate has doubled. But of course, as we can imagine here, or as we can see, the signal is more complex, right? And as we will see later, there are some, some challenges associated with how we can transfer this digital signal on the cable, on the line. Okay? So we'll, we'll see the challenges when we want to represent this. So it's not easy. So this one looks, looks easy, but it's not, it's not, even this one is not easy to represent on the, on the, uh, on the actual physical medium. But using this concept, we can easily double the bit rate. So, uh, so a digital signal has eight levels, then we know that it can represent how many bits? Three bits. Very easy. Okay? So each signal level is represented by three bits. Type. So the bit rate is, is the number of bits sent per one second. So this is the bit rate. How many bits we can send in one second. <coughs> and based on... The, uh, the, the digital signal that we use to represent these bits, okay, we can increase or decrease this bit rate by having the signal uh, uh, to be more complex, having multiple levels. But this will have some challenges. There is also the concept of bit length. Bit length, uh, 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 in order to understand it, we, it's similar to wavelength. Remember, with the wavelength, we said that this is the distance that one bit can span over the uh, medium, over the physical medium. So, it's the bit duration, so it's the bit duration multiplied by the propagation speed, similar to wavelength. But it's not the entire, because this is digital signals here, we're talking about, in general, non-periodic signal. So we said, Wavelength has some uh, significance if we're talking about periodic signals. And we said that for one cycle, how much distance can the signal travel? So 
we said that it's the, the duration is itself multiplied by the propagation speed. Here, the bit length is defined as the, uh, the distance that one bit travels. So it doesn't have to be a periodic signal in that case. And it's simply the bit duration multiplied by the propagation uh, uh, speed. So assume that we, uh, so an example to illustrate this, assume that we need to download a text document at a rate of 100 pages per minute. 100 pages per minute. What is the required bit rate? This question is, is, is missing. It's missing some important value because uh, I did not tell you um, the page itself, how many characters per page or how many lines per page or something like this. So in the solution here, we say that yani practically we could have like around 24 or 25 lines. Each line would have 80 characters. So we can multiply and get the number of characters. And, and then assuming that each character is represented by 8 bits, then we can have up to 100 times 24 lines times 80 characters per line times 8 bits per character, right? So we can have up to all these uh, uh, bits per second, which is around 1.6 megabits per second. So one page can be represented using 1 uh, megabits per second. If we were to, <coughs> to be able to send 100 pages per, uh, uh, per minute. In fact, what's, what's, um, if it's per minute, if it's per minute here, uh, then this is per second. So what is, what is if we want to send this per minute? Divide by 60. Divide by 60, probably, which is, which, is not, which is not illustrated here. So I need, to be, I need to actually divide this by 60 if I want to have 100 pages per minute. Okay? Uh, so, this is this is uh, these are very important concepts now. So, a digital signal is an infinite uh, uh, digital signal with an infinite bandwidth. What does that mean? As we said before, if you have if you have a digital signal that looks like this. If you have a digital signal that has sharp change, we said that this is represented in the frequency domain as a mm -hmm. infinite frequency, right? Mm -hmm. Because the frequency is the amount of change in the signal. So if the, if the signal is changing uh, similar to a sine wave, then this is one frequency component in the, in the frequency domain. Mm -hmm. But if it's sharp change like this, mm -hmm. then in the frequency domain, theoretically, it's infinite uh, uh, frequency. So, um, so in many ways, it's very hard for us to represent a pure digital uh, uh, signal using an analog signal. Well, according to, to Fourier, we still can, but the problem is that we need to have infinite number of sine waves to represent this, uh, uh, this digital signal. Infinite number of sine waves. So that's not possible. So in that case, we need to use some approximation, as we will see uh, later. Um, so, so we have two types of communication uh, systems. And this is very important. We have baseband transmission. And the baseband transmission, what happens is that the, the channel, and by channel here I mean any communication medium, could be wired, could be wireless, could be fiber optics, anything. The channel itself uh, works in the low frequency, which means that the channel has a bandwidth which is around the zero frequency. Okay? An example of this is all the copper cables that we talked about in 455. So coaxial, um, STP, UTP. All of them, they work in the baseband, which means that the channel itself works in the low frequency range, and there is no, like, uh, we call here, we call it RF, no radio frequency component. 
Okay? We always work in the baseband. Um, so the representation of the channel is simply by a, a, a low-pass filter or a low-pass channel, which starts from zero to a specific frequency component, depending on the type of, a cable, of that cable. So, for example, UTP and STP, they tend to be in the hundreds of kilohertz. Okay? One mega, two mega, something like that. Coaxial tends to be a little bit more. Coaxial supports more, but all of them, they start from zero frequency. So it's in the low range of uh, the frequency. So the frequency here starts from, from zero. Okay? Usually, in this type of communication systems, we need dedicated medium. Why? Because if we have two, two nodes are trying to send on the channel at the same time, then we cannot distinguish between them because they both will start from zero frequency. So, uh, so one will... Um, so one will be like this and the other one will be like this or the another one would be like this. So even if they have different bandwidths, they still overlap, right? So no matter what they do, they will overlap. And that's why we, we keep telling you in 455, if two nodes are sending on the line at the same time, then will be collision, collision right? Because, because we're talking in the baseband. All the nodes, they work in the baseband by default, okay? So why we don't have that in wireless? We don't have collision if, 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 if more than two nodes are sending at the same time. We don't necessarily have collision, even though we're, we're, we're talking about the animal, a shared environment. We're talking about the air, right? So why we don't have collision? Because in this type of communication <coughs> medium, we use usually broadband transmission. With broadband transmission, the channel will have a bandpass filter behavior. It doesn't necessarily have to start from zero. It starts from F1 to F2. Okay? So it starts from a span of frequency which is specific to this channel. So if we have two nodes sending at different frequencies, right, they will not overlap. So instead of having a scenario like this, then we will have... Um, We'll have one node sending on, a, on, a, on a, a bandwidth like this, and the other one is sending on a bandwidth like this. The F1 and F2 do not have to overlap. So in that case, we don't necessarily have collision. So we call this broadband, broadband transmission. And this is the concept that we use for cellular communication, for all types of wireless communication. And also, and some uh, types of fiber optic communication. Okay? So even within one line, if you can do that, if you can have uh, a transmitter and a receiver that can uh, use different frequency, frequency or wavelength in the case of fiber optics, then there would be no collision. <clears throat> but this requires uh, special uh, transceivers uh, to facilitate this type of communication. So broadband transmission uses the concept of modulation. So before we transmit the signal, the signal will still be in the baseband. Okay? So our, like, our voice, our voice still has some low frequency. Still works starting from zero frequency all the way to 4K, right? So we talked about that last time. So how can we uh, uh, use the mobile phones to communicate or to, to do some voice calls? What happens is that before sending our voice, what we do is that we use the concept of modulation, meaning that we take any signal, whether digital signal, ones and zeros, or analog signal, and then we push it in the frequency domain in, in a specific range. Supposedly, this range of frequency is unique or is, is separate and it, it is supposed to have no uh, uh, concurrent transmission from any other node. Of course, this is idealistic case, 
there will still be some communication, but this communication, we called it interference. We didn't call it collision. Why? Interference is different. Interference can affect my signal, but I can still detect it. Collision, I cannot detect anything. So both signals are gone. Isn't that right? So for in wireless, we always talk about interference. So I may have actually some overlap between some of the signals, but not total overlap that will not allow me to detect any part of the signal. I can still detect the signal, and that's why we have high quality voice, low quality voice, something like that. So this affects the quality of the signal, but I can still detect it. Okay? So broadband transmission talks about the fact that the channel will have a band pass filter behavior, not a low pass filter behavior. Okay? So these are uh, very important concepts that uh, need to be clear in, in your mind. Here. <clears throat> so, so this is an example of a low pass filter uh, channel um, with different frequency, with different bandwidths. So even though these two signals they have different bandwidths, or these two uh, uh, channels, sorry, they have different bandwidths, but they both start from zero. So we cannot send those two signals together at the same time, right? Because in that case, collision will happen. Uh, so if we have the input signal looks like this, if we have this input signal, this is the input signal now, and then I have a band pass or uh, a broadband uh, 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 Sorry, so th this is the, if, sorry, if we have the digital signal looks like this, and if we were to have a channel with an, with an infinite frequency, then we will get the digital signal exactly as is. Okay? Why? Because as we said, the digital signal with sudden change like this has infinite frequency components. So if we were, theoretically, to assume that the channel will have infinite frequency, then and only then we will, we will be able to receive uh, uh, the digital signal as is. But this is almost, in, not almost, this is impossible to have. You will never have a channel with infinite bandwidth. You cannot have this channel in reality. So instead, for bandpass or for uh, uh, broadband transmission, you have F1 and F2. And in that case, you have a filter, a bandpass filter that looks like this. So what you will end up getting is a signal that looks like this. If you're lucky, you will be able to detect at the receiver this signal and recognize this signal from this signal. And there are some techniques to do that, which we'll talk about later. Right? But as you can see here, this signal is an approximation of this signal. It's close, but it's not it. It's not the exact uh, uh, identical copy of this signal. Why? Because these sudden changes will have high frequency components, and I cannot really have these frequency components. So instead, I will have limited frequency range, which will allow me to recover an approximation of this signal. So that's how uh, uh, typically it looks like. So baseband transmission of a digital signal that preserves the shape of the digital signal is, uh, is possible only if we have a low pass channel which will start from zero with an infinite frequency. And that's not possible. Right? So we know that this is not possible. So uh, an example so uh, 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 we have an, so this is not sorry this is not an exercise an example of a dedicated channel where the entire bandwidth of the medium is used as one single channel is wireless LAN as we said so we have uh, uh, 
the wireless LAN, sorry, the, the LAN or local area networks, this is wired, sorry. So for Ethernet, for example. So Ethernet has a dedicated line or dedicated uh, wire, and it connects two or more nodes, right? So why we still call it dedicated, even though it may connect multiple nodes? Because even if it connects more than two nodes, we will not allow more than one node to send at any point in time, right? Which means that during this particular time, this node will have a dedicated channel. And that's what we have studied before in 455 about Sysma CD, uh, that at any point in time, you need to allow one node to, a, to have access to the medium at any point in time. If two nodes send at the same time, collision will happen, and we, have, we can detect it, and we can do something about it, and so on and so forth. So uh, this, is, this is all because in the physical layer, we have baseband transmission. We don't have broadband transmission. It's baseband. So all the nodes will start from zero frequency, which means that if you have two nodes sending at the same time, their signals will overlap in the frequency, and they will not be detectable from each other. So almost every uh, wired uh, LAN today uses dedicated channel. With the only, with yeah, some exception related to uh, fiber optics, there are special types of fiber optic networks that kind of uses broadband transmission or some type of broadband transmission. But in general, using any wired networks, we use uh, uh, baseband transmission. So for two stations communicating with each other, in a bus topology, even in a bus topology LAN, with multi-point connections, only two stations can communicate with each other, which means one of them is sender and the other one is receiver. Okay? So even bi-directional is not possible at the same time. So you cannot have full duplex communication on a shared line concurrently. You cannot have that. Only one node can send at any point in time. So in a star topology, a star topology that looks like you have a, a node in the middle that that, uh, that acts as a hub, and so on. So in a star topology, uh, the entire channel between each station and the hub is used for communication between this, these two entities. So this, this line is dedicated between this station and the hub. So you can have one node sending to the hub at, at any point in time, but you cannot have uh, the hub sending to multiple nodes or a node is sending while the hub is sending at the same time on the same, uh, on the same dedicated line. That, that's not possible. Okay? Type. Uh, so low pass, low pass channel with a limited bandwidth, it can only reconstruct or detect an approximate shape of the digital signal, not the actual, not the actual identical uh, digital signal, because this is not possible. This, uh, this requires that the channel will have infinite frequency, which is not typical. Type. What kind of approximation? Well, the approximation depends on how the, 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 the bandwidth of that channel, the bandwidth of that channel, which is uh, the channel will have as we said, we'll start from zero to F1. Depending on what is the value of F1, the approximation will be accurate or inaccurate. So if F1 is, is high as much as possible, then we will be able to recognize an accurate copy of that. Sorry, isn't it how you use the star grid? Sorry? The star grid for Okay. So if F1 is, is high as much as possible, then we will be able to have a better approximation or accurate approximation of, of the signal. If F1 is low, then it's only rough approximation, and we'll see how that looks like. <coughs> so in rough approximation, we consider, we consider the worst case of having only one uh, frequency of the, uh, the signal. So 
we can we can try to use one sine wave to approximate the the, the, the signal. This is the lowest because we said that any composite signal can be represented by multiple sine waves, right? Starting from frequency zero all the way to infinity. So if we have inf infinite number, then we can uh, we can reconstruct the digital signal. But it's not possible. So the 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 roughest kind of approximation of the signal is to use one sine wave only to try to minimize the number of frequency uh, that we have, the number of frequencies that we have. Type. How, how does this look like? So if we were to uh, have a digital signal that looks like this, it's three zeros, and three zeros can be represented by just negative voltage or whatever value of the voltage doesn't matter, but it's the same value. So we can represent this uh, 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 from the channel point of view, we can represent it by a sine wave with frequency zero. That's possible. We can do that. Because as we said, the low, the, the, the low pass channel will start from zero. So uh, if the signal, if the original signal has a frequency of zero, which means that there are, there are no changes. Okay? So either all ones or all zeros. Both of them are fine. So that's not a problem. And we can use a sine wave of frequency zero, which is what we call the DC component. We call it sometimes the DC component. So it's fine. If we have one change that looks like this, then we can use a, a sine wave for approximation. It's rough, it's very rough approximation, but this is the minimum that we can uh, use to approximate this digital signal if we were to minimize the uh, frequency uh, uh, components or the frequency harmonics, we call them. So, uh, so this signal can be represented if we, were to, if we were to have two sine waves, then the approximation will be better, as we will see later. But here we assume that the lowest is to have only one sine wave. So this sine wave, because we have three nodes, sorry, three bits, so the maximum changes that we can have are a two, which is this case. So we have zero, one, zero. Okay, so in that case, because we have two changes, you will see that, or we can imagine that the sine wave will have higher frequency. But still, it's one frequency, it's one harmonic, one sine wave that we can use to represent uh, uh, this digital signal. And we know how to do that, it's easy. Okay, we have one frequency, it's not infinite, we have one frequency component. So if we have only one change, then the frequency of the sine wave will be less. So the frequency of this signal is half this signal, almost, right? So uh, here we have two changes, then we have one sine wave, so we can still represent this digital signal with one sine wave or one uh, uh, harmonic, okay? one frequency. But it will have double the frequency of, of this one. Okay, so we can do that, and, and remember this, uh, just if you, uh, yani, uh, if you wonder about this, um, this number here, this is the phase. Okay, so this is the phase, don't worry about this so much. So uh, here the phase is 180 degrees, which means that the, the, the signal that we will generate is, is, uh, is positive voltage, and it's, it's the minus of, the, of this signal. So uh, here the phase is 180 degrees. Here it's um, 180 degrees because we know that sine wave starts from zero and then up, right? So this signal is the same, but it starts from negative and then positive. And that's why we have a phase shift of 180 degrees, which means that the sine wave is, a, is, 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 is reversed. Okay? Yani, it's not it's details, yani, it's not. But for us, it's still a sine wave, okay? With a specific... Uh, so this one, for example, does not start from zero. So it has a phase shift of 270 degrees. Okay? So it's like a cosine wave, but it's, 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 uh, it's reversed. 
Regardless, for us, it's still one frequency component with whatever phase shift that we have. And the, the frequency of this sine wave depends on how many changes you have in the, in the actual digital signal. But in all cases, we were able to represent all these bit combinations with three harmonics, all of them. Each one of them is represented by one of these harmonics. Okay? One of these harmonics, and then we play with the phase. It's either inverse or uh, uh, with phase shift of zero. Like this one, for example. So this one was a phase shift of zero. Okay? But all these uh, uh, digital signals can be represented by one of these harmonics. One of these frequency components. It's just a sine wave with a specific uh, frequency. Okay? Any, uh, any questions? So this is the roughest, the, 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 uh, the lowest approximation that we can have to represent a digital signal. And that, that's given that the digital signal um, is only three uh, bits and with maximum of two changes uh, uh, within these three bits, right? So this one is very rough. So there is, a, there is a big difference between the digital signal and the actual uh, sine wave. It's, it's the highest, the highest uh, frequency of the sine wave is when you have two changes within this, this uh, three, uh, three bits, right? So this is the highest. So that one will give you a harmonic of n over 2 as a frequency. Okay? Because this one will give you n over 4. This one will give you n over 4. So why we didn't say n over 4? Because if you have, uh, 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 in general, stream of bits, then you have to design your frequency component based on the worst case. And the worst case, if you have a specific number of bits and you have the maximum changes within these bits. If you have the maximum changes, then you will end up with a frequency which is n over 2. This is the maximum. And this is simply because you can represent these changes by one negative component and one positive component of the sine wave. Right? So the negative and the positive component, two of them will, will form a one cycle. Right? So I was able to represent two changes or two bits with only one sine wave cycle. So this way, the frequency is half. And this is the, 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 uh, the, the, uh, the worst case using one harmonic. Using one harmonic. Okay? So if we want to have a better approximation, because we know that it's rough. So if we want to have a better approximation, then what we could do is to represent the digital signal using two components or three frequency components. So this one is one frequency component, which is one sine wave. If we have two frequency components, we will have this shape. Okay. If we have three frequency components, then we have a shape that looks like this. And this one is closer, by the way. Okay. Why? Because the, here, you see that the, there is abrupt change more than here. Here, the change is like gradual. And, uh, and with this rough change, we will know later on when we talk about noise and things like that, this one is more prone to noise, more, sorry, more resistive to noise. It's better uh, when we represent the signal using three harmonics. So this is one harmonic, two harmonics, three harmonics. Okay? So usually when we represent this signal using one harmonic, we use one sine wave. And the sine wave has a frequency which is uh, uh, n over 2, where n here is the number of bits. Okay? So n over 2. So if we have 3 bits, then this frequency is, is 2, or 2, uh, two, two, uh, 2 hertz. Okay? So uh, if we want to have two harmonics, then the, the, uh, you have a frequency of n over 2 and here 3n over 2. So you have n over 2 and 3, sorry. 
You have two harmonics, one at n over 2 and one at 3n over 2. And here you have n over 2, 3n over 2, and 5n over 2. We'll talk later about why, why specifically these harmonics. So usually, if we have one harmonic, then it's n over 2. If we have two harmonics, it's n over 2 and 3 n over 2. And if you have three harmonics, then you have up to 5 n over 2. So the, the, as we can imagine here, the, 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 uh, the bandwidth of this one is higher than one harmonic. And the bandwidth of this is, a, is even higher. So the bandwidth of this is three times this. And the bandwidth of this is five times. So the more harmonics you have, the higher the bandwidth of the, uh, uh, the, re the signal representation. Which means that if you want to have an accurate representation like this, then your channel needs to have, your channel of transmission needs to have at least a bandwidth of 5n over 2. At least in order to have this approximation. Of course, we can have four approximation or four harmonics or five harmonics or something like this, but it's the same concept. So you can have as many harmonics as you want. So usually up to three harmonics are enough when it comes to a, a digital signal that looks like this. Up to three is fine. Okay, so this is to represent the digital signal using and analog sound wave harmonics. Okay, so any any uh, any questions so far? All right. Uh, so in baseband transmission, the required bandwidth, the required bandwidth to represent this digital signal, is proportional to the bit rate. So the more bit rates you want to have, the more bandwidth you need, okay? And of course, proportional to the bit rate and the number of harmonics that you use, right? Because if you, uh, uh, if you, have, if you want to send more bits in one second, then you need higher bandwidth. And then if you want to send fixed number of bits per second with, an high, with a high quality signal, which means higher harmonics or more harmonics, then you also need more bandwidth. So uh, it's proportional to the number of bits and the, uh, uh, the number of harmonics that you, that you want to have or you want to use to represent the signal. So as we said, if you, uh, if you have, if you have a, a number of bits per second, one kilobits per second, then if you want to have one harmonic, it's a, it's n over two, right? So this is the roughest approximation of this signal. You want to have a bandwidth of the channel of uh, this one kilobits per second or 1000 divided by two, half, n over two, which is 500 hertz. So the lowest bandwidth that you have to represent this uh, particular digital signal with a bit rate of one kilobits per second. And this is assuming that you have the highest number of changes in this digital signal. Remember, as we said that the highest, because the, we, we, actually you can have multiple frequencies to represent these uh, bits depending on how many changes you have in the, in the, uh, in the bits. And as we said, as we showed the, in this so when we say that the bandwidth is 500 hertz, it could be less. But using one harmonic, we can have uh, 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 the worst case scenario of having the maximum number of changes, which will allow us to um, have one frequency sine wave with uh, a frequency of 500 hertz. Okay? If, if we were to use uh, three harmonics, or sorry, two harmonics, one, at n over 2 and the other one is at 3n over 2, then the bandwidth is simply triple this. So it's 500 times 3. Okay? So it's 1.5 kilohertz. 
If we were to have three harmonics, then as we said, one will be at n over 2, 3 n over 2, and 5 n over 2, right? So the bandwidth will be 5 times this, which is 2.5 kilohertz. Okay? So we can see that as we increase the bit rate, of course, this bandwidth will increase. And if we want to have higher harmonics, also the bandwidth will increase. Wadah? So when we have higher bit rate, this bandwidth will increase. If we have higher harmonics, also the bandwidth will increase. So it's proportional to these two parameters. The bit rate and the number of harmonics that you use. Okay? Any uh, confusion? Okay. <coughs> it will only get worse. So if you uh, if you're not following, or if you started to lose it, just uh, trigger it now because it will get it will get a little bit more difficult. Uh, very simple uh, exercises about this concept. So we know that. As simple as that. So if you have a specific bitrate and we want to represent this digital signal using one harmonic, so it's n over 2. If we want to use two harmonics, so it's 3n over 2. If we want to have three harmonics, it's a 5n over 2. Very, very simple. So what is the required, what is the required bandwidth of a low-pass channel if we need to send 1 megabits per second by using a baseband transmission? Well, So the answer, of course, I did not give you one important parameter. What is the quality? How many harmonics do you want? Right? Um, I, can, I can slip, like I can throw one word here without giving you that. By just slipping a word like maximum or minimum. That's it. And I, I will leave you to understand what this means. Okay? If I tell you, yes, I'm using the minimum bandwidth. W what does that mean? Hmm? One harmonic, bravo Ali. That's it. So I did not give you how many harmonics. I did not, uh, yani, uh, it's, not uh, it's not direct. Okay? But, I, but just by throwing one word, I give you a hint. Okay? So this is just yani, some tricks how we can play with the question and give you the, the, the parameter without actually giving it to you, okay? So if we were to use one harmonic, then we know that the bandwidth is the bit rate over two. And this is the lowest bandwidth. We cannot have lower than this. If we, uh, if we want to have a better approximation, so it's three n over two, and if we want to have even better approximation, we have five n over two. And we, can, we can increase, but up to three harmonics is more than enough for us. Okay. Type. We have a low pass channel with a bandwidth of uh, uh, 100 kilohertz. Here I can tell you what is the maximum bit rate you can, you can have. Hmm. So the maximum bit rate that we can have again is when we have one harmonic, right? Why? Why? Because the bit rate, sorry, the bit rate equals n over 2, and this is the best case scenario. Okay? So the bit rate equals, uh, sorry, the, sorry, the, sorry, the bandwidth, the bandwidth equals n over 2 when we use one harmonic. So this is the minimum bandwidth. Okay? So if I want to use the same bandwidth for Two harmonics, then this will be 3n over 2. Which means that n itself will be reduced. So, so the, the best case scenario is when we have one harmonic, and this way will allow us to use the minimum bandwidth to represent the maximum number of bits. So, um, 
So in both cases, it's the minimum or the maximum, but you need to understand exactly how the relationship looks like. And don't get confused. In both cases, it's the, the one harmonic is, is, is enough for us to represent the maximum number of bits using the minimum bandwidth. Okay. So the maximum bit rate can be achieved if we use the first harmonic or one harmonic only. So the bit rate in that case, remember that the bit rate uh, equals to a double the bandwidth. So if we have a bandwidth of 100 kilohertz, so the, uh, uh, this 100 kilohertz equals to n over 2, right? So this leads to n equals 200 kilohertz, right? Any question? Wadah? So this is for baseband. So for baseband transmission, this is what, <coughs> what we can have and usually we represent the digital signal using one or two or three harmonics. And we can calculate the bandwidth in all cases and if we have specific bandwidths, then we can reverse and calculate the, uh, the bit rate that we can have. In bandpass transmission, it's a little bit different. So we need to know how, how it's different. Um, if the available channel is a bandpass, we cannot send the digital signal as is. We have to use, as we said, we have to use modulation. So we have to shift the signal from the baseband to higher frequency range. But we have to send it all together, which means that instead of the digital signal having a range of frequency from 0 to F1, we need to shift it in the frequency to have a range of F1 to F2. And this will allow us to send over specific types of medium like, a, like wireless. So we need to convert uh, the signal, the digital signal, to an analog signal before transmission. And this means that we need to shift it in the frequency and have an analog signal as we will it. So this is how it looks like. So this is the input signal. So an input signal like this, if we were to represent it using a baseband, as we said, we have the approximations, and in approximations we have one or two or three harmonics. If we were to use it for baseband, we cannot send one or two or three harmonics and that's it. That's not enough, because these harmonics will still be in the baseband. So instead, what we do is that we have to convert the signal into a pure analog signal, and we have multiple ways of doing that, which we will study in, in details. So this is the, how the analog signal looks like. So first, we have to take the signal and shift it in the frequency domain. Shifting in the frequency domain means that we have to, we have to carry the digital signal over a, sort of a sine wave. We call it a carrier. We call it a carrier. And this sine wave, we know that the sine wave has one frequency. So this will be the middle frequency of the represented signal. So it looks like this. So in the frequency domain, in order to understand, because these shapes are, are a little bit complicated, but uh, what happens in the frequency domain is like this. The digital signal, as we said, whether one harmonic, two harmonic, three harmonic, whatever, will have a representation in the frequency domain that from, uh, from zero, to F1, okay? So uh, if, we, if, we low, if we carry this signal over a carrier, what will essentially happen is that this, no, this uh, uh, signal will be shifted in the frequency domain by an amount of the, the frequency, the carrier frequency of this sine wave. And it will have the same bandwidth and it will look like this such that this span is actually F1, okay? But by doing that, أصبح في F1 and F2. فبقت إيه؟ فبقت band pass channel instead of low pass channel. 
Okay? So uh, this, uh, this sine wave, this special sine wave, we call it a carrier. Okay? And it, it, it helps us to shift the baseband signal to higher uh, frequency components. And this way, it will allow us to go through a bandpass channel. A bandpass channel, a perfect example of this is wireless. Okay? And by doing that, we can shift the signal in the frequency domain in a range of frequency that we know that it's not used by any other communication. So in that case, you can have multiple people communicating through wireless all at the same time without having collision. They interfere with each other, but it's not collision in the sense that each of us can still reconstruct the, uh, 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 the signal for uh, communication. So in that case, the, uh, uh, the received signal will look similar. So in that case, actually, dealing with analog signals, assuming that this channel is perfect, which is almost impossible, Bardo, as we will see later, because we have uh, frequency, uh, because we have limited frequency, then we can have an accurate signal at the receiver side, and we can reconstruct this digital signal again, as it shows here. Okay? So this is the uh, broadband transmission. So what are the properties of this broadband transmission? Of course, as an example of this, is, as, as we said, wireless. So um, an example of broadband transmission Uh, using modulation is sending a, 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 computer, a, a computer data through a telephone subscriber line. The line connecting um, a resident to a central uh, telephone office, these lines are des de designed to carry voice with a limited bandwidth. So the channel is considered a bandpass channel in that case. That's another... This, this example is a little bit difficult from, uh, from wireless. Um, so in digital subscriber line, or DSL, I'm not sure how many of you are uh, familiar with DSL. We used to use DSL. Of course, now we're luxurious to have uh, fiber to home and things like that. But in the past, we used to use DSL. So uh, the idea of DSL is a little bit tricky because we had, we had the telephone lines, and the telephone lines are used to communicate voice. And telephone lines are dedicated, so the voice itself is from 0 to 4K, and it's, it's okay. But later on, we thought about using DSL for data transmission. So how can we send data over telephone lines while we have the voice signal over the same uh, telephone line? How can we do that? Hmm? But using modulation. So, so what happens is that we take the digital signal of the data itself and then we shift it in the frequency domain okay, to be above the 4K voice signal. So we know that the voice itself is a signal from 0 to 4K, 4 kilohertz. But actually the line itself, as a telephone line, it can carry more than that in terms of frequency. So what they did is that they said, okay, so we'll take the data itself as a digital signal, we'll do modulation, we'll shift it in the frequency domain above the, 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 the 4K. So this is the voice, and this is data. <coughs> and both of them are on the same line. Okay? So by using broadband transmission, we were able to use combined signal Part of it is data and part of it is voice. So that's another uh, 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 very important usage of broadband transmission. Okay? But of course, this, this same concept is used for wireless uh, yeah, I mean, very commonly. Amen? Like here for DSL, we use it to distinguish voice from data. For wireless, we use it to distinguish any two communication, any communication happening between any two people which is much more difficult in that case. Okay? So that's another example that we use for uh, uh, broadband transmission. Okay. 
So I will give just an idea about this and then we'll continue later on, inshallah. So uh, this is a very important uh, uh, topic about the transmission impairment. Transmission impairment here talks about the fact that our transmission is almost never uh, uh, perfect. In addition to the approximation that we're trying to, to use, there are some external sources of noise that affects our transmission. So the reconstructed signal that we, uh, uh, that we have talked about, the fact that it's approximated at the receiver side, this is the perfect form of it. The less perfect form is to have external noise that also affects the, the quality of the reconstructed signal. So these impairments are divided into three different uh, categories of impairments. There is attenuation, there is distortion, and there is noise. So these are three categories of impairments that will affect also the quality of the signal at the end of the channel. Okay. So this will also be another challenge. So even if we use three harmonics, so why we now use three harmonics and not two? So if the channel is very noisy, we better use three harmonics and not two because two is rough approximation. So any, any few amount of noise will affect the quality of the signal. So if, if, we, if we don't know about this topic, then we say, oh, okay, let's use one harmonic and that's it, which is the, 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 the roughest approximation. But if we know, when we know about this, <clears throat> then we will appreciate why we need to have three harmonics or sometimes more. Because these three harmonics will, will give me higher quality. When it gets affected by the noise, the noise will not affect the reconstruction of this signal at the receiver side. So that's the, the, the importance of why we need to study this, uh, this noise and understand the different types, okay?